Uh, welcome guys, uh, my name is uh, Michael Schaustra, I'm an uh, IT consultant uh, and I work for uh, Xiveo. Um, I think I have uh, a little bit experience in Zabbix uh, because in the last pretty much eight years I've been into Zabbix and doing all sorts of things. And that's actually why I came onto this topic, why alerting is important. Uh, because we as technical guys uh, like to deep dive into scripts, into new agents, into any other things that are technical related. Um, but sometimes we don't like the alerting part that much uh, to set it up. So I think let's talk about this topic uh, uh, for now. Um, yeah, a lot of impulses a day. I think that uh, there are a lot of people nowadays um, who are getting a lot of notifications from any of these platforms, whether uh, it's a notification about a new thing happening in the world, about the coronavirus, or about uh, uh, things going wrong in the world, or your friends contacting you. I think we get a lot of impulses a day. And yeah, how to make your Zabbix alert stand out, right? Because 500 messages a day is not that good for you, I think. And sometimes you miss things. Um, so yeah, I think that alerting is a, a very important thing. Um, who also thinks that uh, you are receiving too much messages a day? Only one? So you all configured your triggers properly. Nobody gets like 100 messages. You are not in WhatsApp groups. Nobody, like nothing, not your child is constantly asking, can I go home, is the dinner yet, done yet? No, nothing, okay, well, apparently I'm the only one getting a lot of messages then. Um, but yeah, how to uh, uh, make them stand out? And why are they important, actually? So yeah, um, we spend a lot of time in Zabbix, right? In order to get data, in order to collect data in different ways, whether we do it uh, by an agent, or whether we're actually using SNMP or any other um, mechanism that's out there to collect data. So yeah, we spend a lot of time on, on configuring things, connecting things, opening firewall ports in order to actually get the data, communicating with a lot of people, and then, yeah, nobody reads the message. That's the worst thing that can happen. So yeah, I think that Zabbix are the most important messengers. Because of course, it's gonna notify you when something is going wrong or is about to go wrong. Um, so yeah, yeah, since we're in the Netherlands, I think we can compare it to uh, wooden shoes or cheese, that important. Um, and maybe it's a smart idea to align on how you guys are sending your messages. So uh, if you are in a, in a broad team, please, uh, talk to each other and align on which medium you're going to use to send messages. Um, what happens if the message is unclear? Well, I think that a lot of people will try to figure out what's going on, try to log into certain systems to still find out what's going on. Uh, so the importance of the message um, um, is that people need to know what to do when they receive it. I think that's the most important part about sending a message to someone, right? Because what do you expect from our technical guys? What do they need to do? What do they need to check? Um, keep that in mind when sending messages. Um, so yeah, this is what happens when your message is unclear. Let's waste a lot of time. Let's call different parties. Is it up to you? Is this line still running? Can you please log into the database? Can you execute this query? I actually don't know what's going on. So yeah, still no fix after that. Contacting hundreds of people, going in conference calls with everybody, and then still no fix? Well, let's reboot then, right? It's the only option left. This is the reason why I like uh, pointing my messages to the right people with the right information in it to prevent things from this happening and uh, actually speed up uh, the process of remediation of services. Uh, of course, we also have scripts that can do it, but after the second restart of your service, well, pretty much you need a human to interfere. So yeah, 
What happens if nobody reads the message? Yep, 404s, your service will call on fire. And this guy, talk to your manager. Sorry, everything went bad. It's not supposed to. Yeah, we could have figured it out. But our messages slash alerting was not properly set up. And therefore, this happened. Well, I think we don't want to go into that conversation, right? With managers, those things are like, yeah. OK, so how to make your messages better, right? How to do that? Use macros in Zabbix. Point to the right items. Point to the right groups of hosts, etc. And create recovery messages. Because, of course, when something breaks down, you also want to get notified when it is fixed again. Because how else you know that it is fixed? Yeah, I put it in a ticket. It's fixed now. But is it actually fixed? We don't know. Sometimes people just press acknowledge. Recovery messages make sense, right? Think of this guy. He's sleeping. Really, really sleeping. So yeah, some rules on when you are asleep. Because of course, when the guy is on sleep and he's not answering his phone, also your message and all the effort that you put into setting up alarming goes to waste. So yeah, ensure your phone is turned on. Make sure your battery is at 60% all of the time. Ensure that it has a connection. Be around your phone. That's also an important part when you are the one on call. And wake up. Because when you are asleep, you're not able to read a message. And read the message. What is the message telling you? Not like, yeah, I received a message. Blink. One of the 500 messages. So minimize the amount of messages and pinpoint it to the right, uh, of, to the problem actually. So yeah. And Zabbix has some cool functionalities on this. And it's also extending it in 5.0. So yeah, out of the box functionalities to wake a person up. How cool is that? Well, not if you are the one who is receiving the call, but setting it up is pretty cool, right? Out of the box, things like webhooks, SMS portals, uh, scripts that you fire. So yeah, out of the box functionalities to wake a person up. And we are getting a little bit more functionalities with 5.0. So yeah, but if that still doesn't fit your need, right? Then what to do next? Well, we can still do it our own. So I came up with a little script, and maybe you guys like this one, but you can use it if you like. So I said, okay, if a guy is really lazy, right? And he or she overslept, Let's brute force the hell out of him so that he can't say, I didn't receive the message, right? Send 100 commands for that sake to wake him up. Because if you have 1,100 messages, you bet your ass you're going to read it. Or not. I think when your phone is about to explode, you're really into, what is happening on my phone, right? Check it. Use this one and improve it. If you guys find it really funny, just improve this one and use it. But yeah, still no reply. The guy had a, a really good day, or actually the day before, he had something to drink, and he was really, really, really asleep. And what now? We don't have colleagues that we can call. This is the only guy on call. How to wake this guy up? Any suggestions? Yeah, that would be lovely. Yeah, that means that we actually need to go there and uh, all that kind of things. And yeah, probably your manager will say, well, it'll take a lot of time. So yeah, I think that we only have one thing. One thing that can help us. It will be costly, definitely. And it will be hard to set up. That is I'm gonna tell you as well. And also, you have to minimize your message because it's the gateway of last resort. But the only way 
to get the message across, and to get this guy out of bed, is sending pigeons. And actually, it is a supported RFC. So if you guys are really like into getting people out of bed, buy a pigeon in order to get the message across. You do not rely on any infrastructure. The guy will fly to the guy and will wake him up. Thanks, guys. And keep using Zabbix. Any questions on this? <laughs> I still find it strange that I'm the only one saying that I get a lot of messages every day, but everybody is like, doo -doo -doo -doo. no questions, anyone? Okay. Well, feel free to talk to me afterwards. Do you guys have any questions on any topic for that matter? Okay. Uh, Oh, uh, yeah. So when it comes uh, to Zabbix and configuring Zabbix when you've just started using it, um, how long did it actually take you to get, you know, to that perfect, to decrease that amount of noise to a perfect level? So you're receiving, you know, only messages that you need to. How long did it take you? Was it years? Was it months? Was it weeks? Was it days? Well, it depends. Depends on your infrastructure, of course. Well, I'm talking about you from your experience, maybe, in your company. Mm, kind of, uh, still depends on what you actually want to monitor. And I actually don't think that you need to treat it as like one big IT infrastructure thing. Uh, but just make it work for each individual part that you are about to monitor, right? So uh, when we are talking about uh, big companies with a lot of IT infrastructure, don't treat it as one, because it is actually not. Uh, we have a lot of databases, we have a lot of network equipment, we have a lot of uh, uh, web servers. Well, you can, you can name it, right? And saying we have all our triggers configured properly, I don't believe that. Like, no, I don't believe that. There is always an improvement to be made, uh, but keep them as separate buckets, right? So treat one entity as that one and try to make it work for that entity. And don't interfere with other ones. That makes it a lot easier to say, okay, we already have 20% of our infrastructure already good in monitoring. That's better than having 100% in monitoring and not alarming. But that's only my opinion. It's like, yeah, I have 100,000 metrics being gathered. Yeah, and I don't alarm. It's like, why? It's filling up databases. It's good when you're in the cloud because you pay a lot for storing the data. Yeah. But that's about it. Anybody else? Well, then I think we'll leave it at that. Good guys. <laughs>